On today's show, Tesla holds its AI day and showcases some truly amazing things and some truly bizarre ones. Renewable electricity generation now outgenerates nuclear power plants globally and Indian company Ola reveals electric scooters that have the potential on paper to make a big impact to the way that people travel across the nation. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in New Zealand. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another Ecotech Roundup show in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. This Friday, a local time, Tesla held its AI Day, an event at which Tesla showcased its current technological accomplishments in the field of artificial intelligence and machine learning. During the event, we learned about Tesla's current AI stack and were given the lowdown on Tesla's Project Dojo, its compute node, D1 chip, and compute tile, the technology that lies at the heart of Tesla's brand new Exapod, a computer system so powerful it can execute 1.1 exaflops of operations per second. And then we saw Elon Musk's and finally style reveal of the Tesla bot, a future humanoid robot that he said Tesla will have a functional prototype of next year, which on Elon time could be a whole lot further into the future. To promote it, Tesla had a dancer come on stage in what amounted to a morph suit with a fancy hood. Distraction, it seems, is well and truly alive at Tesla, as well as robots taking all of our jobs. We did a 25 minute breakdown should you want to watch it after this video, but until then, welcome robot overlords. With more electric vehicles coming to market than ever before, demand for electric vehicle grade battery packs is at its highest point in history. SNE research says the battery cell market totaled 105 gigawatt hours in the first half of this year, up 163% year on year. Chinese firm Cattle accounted for 6.6 .6 gigawatt hours of that production, equivalent to 27.8% of the H1 total battery share. LG Energy was second with 6.3 gigawatt hours, a bit of bad news considering the fires its batteries have been involved with lately, and Tesla's battery partner Panasonic was in third place with 4 gigawatt hours. That's a lot of cells. As more of the auto industry turns to electric vehicle production, there's been increased emphasis on low and net zero emission supply chains and the production practices thereof, since the majority of an EV's emissions occur during its production. One way to tackle that is to use green steel, steel that's been produced using no fossil fuels. And Swedish specialists Saab, Elkab and Vattenfall have just celebrated shipping the first batch of green steel to Volvo for use in its future electric vehicles. Unlike traditional steelmaking processes, which use coal or gas-powered fires that heat the iron used to make the steel, this process uses net zero emission hydrogen furnaces. Sadly, I can't tell you where the hydrogen is generated from because I don't know. And yes, just from last week's show, we are looking into making that video on the Blue Hydrogen Report. It's becoming a well-known fact that building and operating a wind farm or massive solar array is far more affordable to an energy company than trying to keep a coal power station running. That's quite an achievement and shows great things lie ahead for our electrical grid mix of the future. But now renewable energy has a new feather in its metaphorical cap. The fact that last year global renewable power generation surpassed nuclear power generation. With nuclear power falling out of fashion and many older 60s era plants now out of commission, approximately 2.75 kilo terawatt hours was generated by nuclear last year, while renewables, excluding hydropower, totaled more than 3.25 kilo terawatt hours. The grid just keeps getting greener and greener. We've been paying close attention to plug-in vehicle sales around the world this year with a few models, namely the Tesla Model 3, Model Y, and Ford Mustang Mark E, as well as the Volkswagen ID3, and of course, Hongguang Mini EV, all enjoying the top of the charts. But during July, an unexpected EV topped Germany's sales charts, the Volkswagen E up, a car which is technically no longer available to buy. Thanks to incredible back orders for the small city car, the E up, and its sibling, the Skoda Citygo, 
have enjoyed large sales volumes in recent months, with a total of 2,556 e-ups getting registered in Germany in July. Interestingly, not a single Tesla model made the top 20 EVs in Germany's sale chart, partly because of price limits on which EVs attract government incentives. Tesla and its autopilot system officially became the target of an official U.S. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration investigation this week when the government agency announced it was looking into 11 autopilot suspected collisions with emergency vehicles. NHTSA says that autopilot was active in each collision and will investigate all Teslas equipped with autopilot, though it isn't clear how relevant this investigation will or won't be as autopilot is undergoing major changes as Tesla phases out the use of radar and its cars. At the same time, two Democratic senators, Richard Blumenthal and Ed Merkley, are calling on the FTC to investigate Tesla's previous claims on full self-driving and autopilot, stating that they fear Tesla's system is not as mature and as reliable as Tesla has represented to the public. They want the FTC to investigate the veracity of Tesla's previous advertising. Watch this space. We've become increasingly suspicious of some of the claims being made by electric pickup truck company Lordstown Motors, especially after its founder and CEO left earlier this year at the same time its former CFO left. Earlier this week, the company's interim executive CEO announced that the company has successfully completed its pre-production process with the plant, quote, production ready to start endurance EV production soon. The company's stamping, assembly body and paint shops are all supposedly complete, as is the first battery production line. The motor line, however, is still being installed, and Lordstown says the first trucks will enter into production in Q4 this year. But full deliveries? Well, don't expect them until Q2 next year, it says. At the tail end of his administration, just before he left the US White House, US President Donald Trump issued an order to further delay a 2016 regulation that was intended to double penalties for automakers failing to meet US corporate average fuel economy targets, a target that he had tried multiple times to completely eradicate. Now, the US National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is considering reinstating that rule and original fines for companies failing to meet emissions targets from the 2019 model year onwards. If it goes ahead, the new fines could severely penalise companies that failed to meet CAFE targets. While most automakers had appealed for the Feds not to change the rules back again, Tesla urged the US Appeals Court to bring back the Obama-era fines. And finally, we have been paying close attention to the growth of the electric two-wheeler market for a number of years, and one brand that's captured our attention plenty of times is Indian company Ola. And this week, it finally launched its smart scooters for the world to see. The entry-level S1 scooter offers a claimed top speed of 90 kilometers per hour, 56 miles per hour, with up to 121 kilometers, 75 miles of claimed range while the more powerful S1 Pro claims a 115 km per hour, 71 miles per hour top speed, and 181 km, 112 miles city range. Bear in mind those range figures are for urban rather than suburban routes, but it's still very impressive, especially when you consider the starting price for the S1, which is the equivalent of 1,350 US dollars. Now that's affordable. And on that note, we are done for the day. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And if you haven't already switched, please do consider switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero Certified Renewable Electricity Company. It is super easy to make the switch, and if you do, you'll be helping New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto green, clean power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back soon with more great videos for you all to enjoy. But until then, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.